Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the exoplanet with the highest Earth similarity index. In other words, according to the scientists, this particular exoplanet might be the most Earth-like planet out there. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, one thing I need to start with is that this particular exoplanet, first of all, has not really been officially confirmed. It is part of the Kepler catalog and it's been detected as a potential exoplanet, but the confirmation hasn't really been um, done yet. And the other thing about it is that it is pretty far away. I believe uh, it's over a thousand light years away from us, and specifically roughly around 1,075 light years away. And it was surprisingly difficult to discover any kind of information about this because no paper has been published about this. But I accidentally found a um, Wikipedia page about this planet in Chinese, of all things. And using what I could Google Translate, I was able to discover more data about it in the actual Kepler catalog. Now, all this actually started with me making a video about the um, now famous Tea Garden Star B and Tea Garden Star C planets. These were discovered only um, literally a few days from when I'm making this video. And uh, both of these planets are potentially terrestrial, maybe even Earth-like. Specifically, the closest planet, Tea Garden Star B, has an Earth similarity index that's roughly around 0.94 or 94% Earth-like. And that is really, really high. Um, there are very, very few objects we've discovered that have such high Earth similarity index. Just to give you a comparison, um, our neighbor, the ridiculously hot Venus, has the Earth similarity of roughly around 0.44. Mercury and Mars are slightly higher at roughly around 0.77 or 77% Earth similarity. Um, then we have our moon, whose Earth similarity is roughly around 0.56, and that's because Moon is way, way smaller and obviously it doesn't have any atmosphere, although that's not really part of Earth similarity calculations, but size and mass are. And um, then we have the object with the highest confirmed Earth similarity of um, approximately 0.95. This is the object known as TRAPPIST-1e in the super famous TRAPPIST system that has seven confirmed terrestrial objects. So this is potentially the highest confirmed Earth-like object. But there is one that's unconfirmed that's even higher, with an Earth similarity index of 0.98, 98% Earth similarity. Now, that object, like I said, is far, way, way farther than TRAPPIST-1 system, and this object has not really been confirmed, even though it was discovered back in 2015. But it will be confirmed one day, and um, that is the day when it's going to probably hit the news as the most Earth-like planet ever discovered. And so let's try to recreate this star system, and of course its planet, using the Universe Sandbox. Now, first thing um, is the star itself. One of the reasons the planet has such a high Earth similarity index is because the star itself is very, very similar to our own sun. In terms of size, they are almost exactly identical. And uh, the only difference is that um, this star known as KOI4878, KOI stands for Kepler Object of Interest, um, is an F-type star, meaning that it's slightly less massive. But at the same time, it's an older star that is going to live much longer than our sun but because it's older, it's also slightly hotter than our sun by now, because it actually increased in size a little bit. So it's a very interesting system. Um, these types of stars, F-type stars, as they grow older, they become less and less active, and eventually they become basically like perfect worlds for us to potentially settle, because they don't really have any more dangerous um, flares or any kind of other dangerous radiation coming out of them. The planet, which I've just randomly generated here, um, is very interesting for many reasons, but we don't really know its mass. That's the one thing we don't really know. We know that its radius, and the reason we know its radius is because the planet passed in front of the star in this fashion, and so we were able to measure its radius very accurately, has a radius compared to Earth of roughly around 1.04. In other words, 
it's slightly like 4% larger than Earth. At the same time, its orbit is also very similar to Earth, but a little bit farther away. But because the star is warmer, it actually makes it very Earth-like in terms of temperature. A single orbit of this planet around the parent star takes it about 1.28 years. So it's slightly longer than our year, but considering the fact that, like I said, the star is warmer and um, this planet could be even more massive than Earth, it could have a very, very Earth-like conditions on the surface. Now, one thing I need to also mention is that Earth similarity index doesn't really mean that the planet is already Earth-like. All it means is that the physical parameters, such as, for example, mass or radius or distance from the star or the star itself, are very similar to what we have in the solar system. But it still could be a very, very different object, very different planet altogether. Also, because it's a candidate, it could maybe not even exist, but that's another story for another day. Until we confirm it or until we actually erase it from the catalog, which by the way you can find it in the description below with the object being right here and all of the parameters being right here as well, we're going to basically assume that it's there and that it's the most Earth-like object. But um, right now we don't really know what sort of an object this is unfortunately, so for all we know it could actually be kind, some kind of a water world with uh, relatively warm conditions here so that this would be an actual liquid water planet which we're going to try to create right here um, or if it has more um, gas-like atmosphere or more venus-like conditions it could even be some sort of um, um, a very neptunian-like gas giant but on the other hand it would be a very small gas giant because um, we know its size very precisely it is, however, more likely to be terrestrial, so it's very unlikely to be a gas giant, and um, it potentially has a relatively large iron core as well. The maximum mass here that we've calculated is roughly around three masses of Earth, meaning that it could potentially have surface gravity that's three times higher than that on planet Earth. Right now it's showing at roughly around 27 meters per second square, which is even higher than Jupiter. But it's very likely that it is some sort of a mixture of all kinds of rocky material, all sorts of metals, and of course, some kind of a liquid or ice formation on top, uh, forming an object that might be very Earth-like. And this Earth-like object would have very Earth-like mass, and obviously, potentially, a chance for it to be habitable, or even have some sort of um, extraterrestrial life. And this is something that is really exciting because of the star that it orbits. Like I mentioned, this type of a star, very similar to our own sun, is one of those stars that create a wonderful, wonderful sort of environment for life to form and for life to um, exist and to become complex. If one day we're able to confirm that um, this particular object is real and that it's as terrestrial as we were originally determined, it has a huge chance of potentially hosting something, life, or at least a wonderful place for us to one day call home if we can get that far. Like I said, it, it is pretty far. Over a thousand light years away from us, that is not a really close distance. But out of 4,000 exoplanets we've discovered, this one is definitely one of the more exciting prospects and is definitely one of those objects we need to follow up on and study a little bit more. But until this object is confirmed or at least given a better name, right now it's just known as Kepler Object of Interest that's not really exciting. So until that day, we are going to hopefully just keep looking, discovering new exoplanets, and maybe one day we'll discover another really exciting world that is even higher on the list of Earth Similarity Index. Specifically, maybe we'll even discover that something as high as 99% or even 100% Earth-like. But until that happens, we're going to keep looking, and until that happens, I'm going to keep making videos. Anyway, subscribe if you still haven't, like this video if you enjoyed watching it, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and space out, and as always, bye-bye.